CBS News special report. I'm Nora O'Donnell in the nation's capital. We are coming on the air because in just a moment, we will witness yet another moment in history as President Trump becomes the first president to be impeached for a second time. Members of the House are voting on a single charge, incitement of insurrection. I want to bring you now live to pictures of the House floor where just a few, just a week ago, I should say, many members of the House were hiding as a mob assault, assaulted the Capitol. The Justice Department calling the Capitol still a crime scene. And it is remarkable to look at Capitol Hill today. There are hundreds of armed National Guard troops protecting the building today. A defense official tells CBS News the threat level at the Capitol is very high and that there are new questions today about the possibility that the riot was in part, quote, an inside job. An organizer of the president's January 6th rally says he worked closely with three Republican congressmen to put maximum pressure on members who were counting electoral votes. At least one of those congressmen denies any involvement. The two hours of debate ahead of today's vote was in fact heated. If you look now at the House floor, we can show you there are at least 10 Republicans who have voted yes on impeachment. This time around, they include Liz Cheney, the number three Republican in the House of Representatives. You can remember, not a single Republican supported President Trump's first impeachment 13 months ago. There you see Republican 10 voting yay. I uh, want to go now to Nancy Cordes. She is our chief congressional correspondent because the votes are now in to impeach President Trump. Nancy? That is correct, Nora. So he will go down in history as the first president to be impeached twice. And the big difference between now and the last time that he was impeached 13 months ago by the House is that members of his own party have joined with all of the Democrats to declare that he has indeed committed an impeachable offense. Ten Republicans so far. There is a handful left to vote. Uh, but this is going to be a, a big blow to a president who in the past has managed to convince all of his House Republican members to stand by him. Not today. And a majority of the House has now voted to impeach President Trump. And when the gavel officially falls, that will make it official. I want to bring in uh, Ed O'Keefe. And um, Ed, extraordinary to watch some of the arguments being made today by both sides. Yeah, it's uh, been several hours of this between this actual debate and an earlier procedural vote. And essentially, the, the arguments have boiled down to if this isn't impeachable, what is? versus this is a waste of time, a rush job, and a fulfillment of a four-year pledge by Democrats to try to get rid of this president. And that is essentially the, the basis of the argument. Uh, a foregone conclusion, especially once we heard that there were so many Republicans interested. We're at 10 now. Uh, some estimates had it going as high as 30, but earlier today there were uh, indications that it would be probably closer to about a dozen, if that, uh, given the pressure uh, on members of the party. Uh, and frankly, some internal polling that they saw overnight that shows that there is understanding that what went on last week is wrong and the president's partly responsible, but it might be detrimental to the future of their political careers. Well, and how much of the Republican Party is influenced by not only Liz Cheney's very strong statement last night, but also word last night and then today even your own reporting that the Senate Republican leader, Mitch McConnell, is angry with the president and that he believes that the president should be impeached. Yeah, it's a, it's a dwindling number of Republicans who are in that camp, if you believe the polling. Even looking at our own that was released this morning, while well, a majority of Americans believe uh, that the president should be impeached, it was only about 15 percent of Republicans who support going through with this. Uh, more than 8 in 10 oppose impeach impeachment. Cheney, McConnell, a handful of others who've spoken out represent sort of that old school establishment, Main Street, business-friendly wing that is hoping now that as the president leaves, perhaps they can somehow reclaim some of their leadership and influence over the party. Uh, but that, you know, it's mm. far too soon to say. But clearly, an effort underway by many of those establishment Republicans to try to regain some control and influence over things. And Nancy Cordes on, on Capitol Hill, despite what Mitch McConnell said last night, has there been any change in his decision to bring back the Senate there in recess right now to move forward with a trial and conviction? Nora, he announced today that despite the Democrats' wishes, he is not going to bring the Senate back 
early for a trial. The Senate is in recess right now. The House was supposed to be in recess this week, too, until this impeachment issue uh, came up so suddenly. And so his decision not to bring the Senate back means that we will not see this Senate trial begin until perhaps the day that President-elect Biden is being sworn in. It's unclear at this point whether the trial would begin the day before the inauguration, on the inauguration, one day after the inauguration. We are really in uncharted waters here. Also unclear at this point is which party will control the Senate chamber when this trial gets underway. Because as you know, there have been those two Democratic victories in the state of Georgia, two senators yet to be sworn in. When that happens, control of the Senate will change hands from Republicans to Democrats. But right now, the state of Georgia has not yet certified those victories. Until it does, they can't be sworn in. So a lot is still in flux here. But one thing we do know now, Nora, is that Democrats do want to move this along to the Senate as quickly as they possibly can. In fact, last night, Speaker Pelosi named her nine House impeachment managers. You'll recall from the last impeachment, these are the lawmakers who essentially serve as the prosecutors. When this goes to trial in the Senate, they will try the case. And the fact that she named them so quickly really indicates that she doesn't want to let any grass grow under her feet. She is going to send this one article of impeachment for incitement of insurrection to the Senate for a trial very swiftly. Nancy Cortez, thank you. The headline at this hour, a majority of the House of Representatives has voted to impeach President Trump, including 10 Republicans in a rebuke of the leader of their own party. As soon as the gavel falls, it will be official. A remarkable moment. And that's what's happening inside the Capitol, outside the Capitol. It's not only under unprecedented security, uh, but also our nation's capital is practically impenetrable. You can't even drive through the streets of the, the District of Columbia. There are so many law enforcement officials uh, and personnel on the streets. And for that, let's bring in CBS News Chief Justice and Homeland Security Correspondent Jeff Pegues. Jeff, I know you've been speaking with your sources, including about a new FBI bulletin. What can you tell us? Yeah, I love the way you describe the environment here, Nora, because that's exactly how it feels. I've been calling this over the last uh, couple of hours Fort Capitol Hill because you have National Guard all over this place, and you know what? They're armed. Uh, so in addition to local police, you have the Secret Service, you have National Guard, you have these huge trucks blocking streets. So yeah, this is not an area that you want to come down and see. In fact, they're discouraging people uh, from coming down to the Capitol area and coming to downtown Washington, D.C. And, and that is a good thing because they want to keep this area clear uh, because of the threat environment that we're seeing. You reference this FBI bulletin that, that talks about some of the caches of weapons that they've found in some of the homes. If, people that they've uh, uh, searched in connection with the Capitol attack a week ago. Uh, and what they're seeing online is this continued disturbing uh, threat stream of, of, of people who are uh, advocating for violence uh, in the Capitol area leading up to the inauguration. And so that's what we're facing here. And that's why you're seeing this large number, Nora, of National Guards uh, members, National Guard members, and the numbers are increasing. At first, we were told there'd be about uh, 10, 15,000. Now the number is going up to 20,000. And again, it's a result of this uh, threat, uh, threat analysis that we're hearing from law enforcement officials. Jeff, noting that the National Guard is now planning to bring 20,000 troops to uh, Washington. That's an increase of some 5,000. There are now more U.S. troops deployed to Capitol Hill than in Iraq or Afghanistan. In fact, it's in the multiples of the total numbers of troops deployed in those two countries. Uh, and also what we saw, you know, the, 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 the military does not make this decision lightly. 
to bring in the National Guard. And what they really don't uh, make a decision lightly is to arm them. And what we saw are National Guard soldiers, which you have pro maybe if you've ever been in a hurricane or a terrible uh, natural disaster, the National Guard is usually there to help. Uh, they are not usually not heavily armed police force. That's not what they do. This is not my own opinion. This is based on all the conversations I've had with officials over the last couple of days. To, so to see Fort Capitol Hill, as Jeff Begay's just called, that this morning uh, arming all these National Guard uh, soldiers was quite remarkable to see them sleeping in the halls of the Capitol last night with uh, their guns. Also, quite a moment to just say what the threat pack picture is right now. Uh, many of them staying uh, the night, and they're, of course, trying to keep our nation's capital uh, safe. And um, we should just note now, if you can see the House floor now, the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, uh, has taken the chair there. So let's go back to our own Nancy Cordes to describe what's next. Nancy? Well, Nora, at this point, we're just waiting for five remaining House members to cast their votes. We're not sure what's taking them so long. Obviously, some House members these days are voting by proxy. They are not here in Washington because of the pandemic. They ask some of their fellow members to go up and vote on their behalf. And so these votes, which typically take 15 minutes, can stretch out to an hour because it takes so much longer to achieve the same thing that you could normally do in person quite quickly. Uh, but you know, Nora, what, what happens next is uh, Speaker Pelosi will obviously announce that the president of the United States has been impeached. She may hold a uh, ceremony with her House impeachment managers later today. And then all eyes turn to the Senate, where uh, 50 Democrats would need 17 Republicans to convict this president, not just impeach him, but convict him, which means that he could be removed from office if he's still in office at that point, which he likely won't be, and then to ensure that he can never run again for president. And so that is really an open question. Uh, you know, there's uh, 50 Republican senators. 17 of them is a heavy lift when you're looking here at the House of Representatives where you had 10 vote yes, 197 vote no. So the overwhelming majority voted no. Doesn't mean we'll see the exact same results in the Senate. Often we see Senate Republicans split from their more fiery House counterparts, but it is still a, a tall order. Um, I think it'll make a big difference where the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell comes down at the end of the day. I know from speaking to people who were in the room with him last week, last Wednesday, as the Capitol was under attack that he was furious both that his beloved institution was coming under attack all the destruction all the devastation the deaths of Capitol Police officers who guard him and the other members of Congress every day but also he was furious at the president for inciting this not just with his words at that rally Wednesday morning just before this invasion, but the things he's been saying for the last couple of months, denying that he lost, claiming he won in a landslide, claiming there was somehow massive fraud and that the election was voted. rigged, which contributed to his Does supporters getting very angry, feeling like this election was stolen. Let's listen now to the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, as she is trying to bring the House to order. Of course, the House floor much larger because there are 535 members, excuse me, 435, there's 100 members of the Senate. They all gathered together for that joint session or for a, most of them when there is a State of the Union address. So it's much larger um, than the Senate floor, for instance. Um, and what was, of course, described as the scene of the crime, the U.S. Capitol by the Department of Justice just yesterday, many of the members very scared by what happened last week and to this day are scared about traveling back to the Capitol as there are st still numerous threats out there to some of their lives. And let me ask you about the, the political repercussions of this, Ed. Are there a number of Republican senators who may ultimately choose to convict the president to sort of slam the door shut on the Trump era? We don't know yet. Um, I mean, if you look at the ones who have publicly stated uh, an openness to this process. On or, this vote, well, the this ayes isn't speaker. are 232, the nays are 197. The res resolution is adopted. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid upon the table.
Congratulations. Yes. And as the gavel has fallen and the Speaker of the House announces the tally, President Trump becomes the only American president to be impeached twice, and twice in just 13 months. That is after only seeing impeachment twice in the century uh, before. The chair uh, announces that pursuant to section 3A of House Resolution 41, the House Resolution 40 is hereby adopted. And their procedural um, matters continue in, in the House of Representatives, but I think we ought to just pause just for a moment the about the historical significance of what we've just witnessed, Ed. I mean, the, what I've been dwelling on all day is it literally requires rewriting textbooks because we've had, you know, there was Andrew Johnson, there was Bill Clinton, there was Donald Trump. So you had three presidents who'd been impeached, one who'd resigned, but now you have to add this whole new section, a president who's been impeached twice. And it's, it's just, you know, incredible to now place him in that terrible and disgraceful category alone as a commander-in-chief who's, who's faced this now twice. Well, they may not want to start reprinting the history books just yet because it's not clear, as you, we were just talking about, what the Senate may do. Yes, exactly. And so you're right. They'll have to wait for that, uh, of mm -hmm. course. But, you know, either way, he has crossed this threshold now twice. And to do it in 13 months and to do it mm -hmm. in less than a week since, or exactly a week, since this insurrection at the Capitol. It shows you how quickly, how infuriated they were, how scared they remain, how concerned they are. And again, we heard it over and over again today from members. If this isn't impeachable, then what on earth could possibly be for a president? We should bring in CBS's Ben Tracy, who is at the White House. And uh, Ben, you've covered this president. Um, he cares about history. He does care what people think about him. Um, this has got to be a devastating uh, blow to his psyche, and he must know the weight of this in terms of his legacy. Yeah, we're told by sources here at the White House, nor that the president has been watching all of this unfold on television all day long, mostly from his private office, just off of the Oval Office in the West Wing and also uh, his dining room here uh, at the White House as well. Uh, we are told we will hear from the president that he is going to record some sort of video message that will come out uh, by the end of the day responding to this in some fashion. Um, I should say, however, though, here at the White House, the reaction to this has been pretty muted because they very much expected this to happen. In fact, a senior administration official told me they were expecting 8 to 13 Republican defections, and I think the latest number we saw on the screen there was 10. Uh, so they had a good sense of how this was going to go down today. I'm told there was not much of a lobbying effort from the White House to lawmakers on Capitol Hill, that they knew this was going to kind of turn out the way it has turned out. And now they are looking forward to uh, this trial in the Senate. And I'm told that as of today, here at the White House, they are confident that there are not the votes in the Senate to convict the president, so they feel good about that. But we should underscore just how different this day is today from the day uh, when President Trump was impeached uh, just about a year ago. He held a rally in Battle Creek, Michigan, where he bragged about the fact that all the Republicans stuck with him, that everybody voted against impeachment. That is not happening today. We have not seen the president. He has been behind the walls here of the White House. Not a single aide has come out to defend him. And there are very few people left in this building. And I can tell you that having just walked through the West Wing in the last hour, the very few people who are still here are currently packing up boxes in their offices. Nora. As there is just one week left before Joe Biden's inauguration. And then why the taped messages that we've seen from the president? I mean, this is a president who loves to, to stop at the cameras when he's, you know, boarding Air Force One or Marine One. Why have there been these carefully packaged taped messages sent out? Certainly the president wants to control the message. He has not seemed to want to have any sort of give and take with reporters in recent days. We did see him yesterday on his way uh, to Texas. He stopped twice to talk to reporters, but he took no questions. He simply uh, made brief comments uh, and then got on the plane or left here uh, from the White House. So they're trying to control this as much as they can. And I think that's the way for the president to say whatever he wants to say uh, without all of us pesky reporters here asking the questions that we certainly want answers to. The president did put out a statement earlier today as all of this was happening, as the debate was happening on Capitol Hill, uh, saying that there must be no violence, no law breaking, 
no vandalism of any kind, saying that is not what he stands for. Uh, what this statement does not say is that it was the president himself last Wednesday who was telling his supporters to fight like hell before they went to the Capitol and did what they did, and then that, that is part of why uh, he is being impeached today. Um, so the president now trying to put the genie back in the bottle uh, on the violence front. Uh, but there is a feeling here at the White House, Nora, that they are simply trying to get through the next six and a half days uh, until this administration is over. Ben Tracy, thank you. Ed. Ben aptly reminds us that that uh, rally was in Battle Creek, Michigan last year on the day of the impeachment. Today, the congressman from Battle Creek, Michigan, who's a Republican, serving in just his first full week in Congress, voted for impeachment, one of only 10 House Republicans to do so. So shows you again how the politics have changed here, that even from that part of Michigan, the congressman felt compelled to vote against his president. It's an excellent point, and, and, and Nancy Cordes, the backdrop to, backdrop to of corporate America uh, sending the message that they are withholding contributions, how much has that influenced what we saw on Capitol Hill today? Well, it is certainly weighing on Republican members, some of whom talked about it today on the House floor, who argued that they felt that they were being silenced for their views. Uh, but there is no question that there is a concern that a growing list of big name companies from Hallmark to American Express are basically wrapping a lot of these lawmakers on the knuckles, those who, and it was more than half of, House, of all House Republicans, who voted to contest the results of the November elections, even as they stood by the results of their own elections. Now, that clearly didn't scare Republicans enough to uh, lead them to vote en masse for impeachment today. No company has suggested that anyone who votes against impeachment is going to lose that funding. But the big question for a lot of Republicans right now is these pauses that we've seen from so many companies in giving. Remember, they haven't cut off the funding entirely. They're just saying they're pausing it for now. So the big question is, how long is that pause going to last? If it's six or nine months, Republicans can recover from that. If it is a, a longer pause, that could be problematic for the midterm elections. And there we see the Speaker of the House, uh, Nancy Pelosi, walking through Statuary Hall. We, are, we understand that she will uh, make an address shortly, and she's going to actually use the lectern uh, that was looted by that Florida man. Uh, you may have seen that man holding it and posing for the cameras. That man has since been arrested um, for defaming federal property, among other charges. The podium has been recovered, and we're told that Speaker Pelosi will speak from that shortly. It should be noted, too, the article of impeachment uh, that has been affirmed by the House, 10 Republicans joining Democrats, um, charges President Trump with willfully inciting violence against the government of the United States. Another story we are following today is not only the security surrounding uh, the U.S. Capitol, but our nation's capital leading up to the inauguration of Joe Biden. But we are also following reports and charges today that there may have been some members of Congress that helped those violent riot rioters who uh, carried out the violence on Capitol Hill. That is part of the story that we are still investigating. Our impeachment coverage continues on our 24-hour streaming network, CBSN. You can watch it at cbsnews.com or on our CBS News app. There's going to be more on your local news on this CBS station. We're going to have a full wrap-up tonight on the CBS Evening News. This has been a CBS News special report. Thank you for joining us. I'm Nora O'Donnell, CBS News, Washington. For news 24 hours a day, go to cbsnews.com.